Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, soccer fans of all ages, this is Armand Colombo Field here at Rocky Marciano Stadium, where tonight it's a big three divisional matchup with huge implications for the Brockton Boxers. It's the New Bedford Whalers and your Boxers. Big three divisional matchup, Boxers undefeated, the Whalers 11 1 and 1. As always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action high above the turf here at Rocky Marciano Stadium. Brockton starting a different goaltender than we've seen all season, Fabio Andrade, the senior keeper. Brockton coming in at 13-0-1. That one draw coming against Mansfield. Wild last few games for the boxers. Of course, we saw that wacky one on Saturday against the Dartmouth Indians. One that resulted in a few yellow cards for the boxers that perhaps shouldn't have been. Athletic Director Kevin Caro actually called the MIAA Saturday afternoon and said, listen, this was in no way, shape, or form warranted. The referees were not spectacular to uh, paraphrase asked the MIAA if he could protest the yellow cards they said no so he then called the referee a signer and said I never want to see these two referees at Marciano Stadium again if I do I'm pulling the team off the field because there were a few injuries None serious enough to keep the boxers out of play today. The Indians goalkeeper left in an ambulance. And it was it was a crazy afternoon here at Marciano Stadium. Anyway, this is one of the more highly anticipated matchups of the season. Of course, the 11-1-1 one one Whalers only losing one game, I believe, to... Nosset and Brockton with that one draw against the Hornets of Mansfield. New Bedford wearing their away red jerseys, red shorts with white trim. The boxers in their home whites with red and black trim. Game against Dartmouth, a 5-1 victory for the Boxers. Jonathan Rodriguez with two of those goals. Free kick for the Boxers from about 37 yards out. It'll be direct. And knocked out, still loose, and eventually picked up by the New Bedford keeper, Javier Avendano. The boxers back line now sending it to Fabio Andrade.
So it's the Boxers taking the ball back. Cross midfield, a little bit out for Leonardo Texera, who has had an excellent season for the Boxers. And he scored one of the goals against the Dartmouth Indians. This one off the back shoulder of Jonathan Rodriguez. Rodriguez scoring on a penalty kick last game. His second straight game here at Marciano Stadium with a penalty kick goal. Now it's Texera turning on the Jets and trying to cross it. It'll go out of bounds off of the Whalers, so the Boxers will have their first corner kick of the evening. It's Odair Montero taking it for the Boxers. And a Boxers goal. Boxers up 1-0 early in this one, seven minutes into the first half. Rodeir Montero credited with the boxer goal. As we take a look at Now another boxer shot. It's Odair Montero credited with the boxer goal that Avendano knocked into his own net. This one sent into the stands. We're gonna take a re uh, look at the replay of the boxer goal. That's Montero on the corner kick. Perfectly aimed shot and Avendano just couldn't get his hands on it. It's one of those Fluky goals that comes up every once in a while. The junior goalkeeper for the Whalers should have had it. And it just slid off of his arms into the back of the net. Now it's the Whalers with a cross and Andrade falling on it, but knocked loose by the Whalers. Excellent work by Claudio Mascarenas to clear this one back towards midfield. Now the Whalers with an opportunity and not high and away by the Boxers defense. Corner kick for the Whalers. About 10 minutes into the first half. It's gonna be taken by James Matos. 
Now that's going to curve it inward towards the boxer net. High over the top, headed back towards the net and wide and out of play, boxer goal kick. Montero now sending it, looking for Leonardo Texera, who's held up, no call, but it's Texera and Rodriguez. And it's knocked out of play by the Whalers. Brockton's got that sneaky speed. They can just turn on the Jets. It's going to be Jalen DeRosa putting this one in play for the boxers. Long throw right into the box. And a one-time shot is going to be deflected out of play. And now New Bedford forced to chase it down. It's going to be another corner kick for the boxers. And Odeir Montero will take this one as well. Montero, another perfectly placed kick, and this one is going to be knocked out by the New Bedford defense. This one headed perfectly for Luis Spinola and knocked perhaps into the net. No, no call as Leonardo Texera ran into Avendano, but Avendano was forced into the net with the ball. So that should either be a foul against Brockton or a goal. Now it's Rodriguez getting tripped up. And a call against the New Bedford Whalers. Ball placed about a yard and a half north of where it should have been. So a quick restart for the boxers. Montero tripping himself up. Good no call there by the refs and his shot from about 30 yards out. Easily saved by Avendano. That's Mascarenas on the far side. Headed back towards midfield by the Whalers. Cleared out, and now it's taken back by the Whalers. New Bedford with out a really good scoring opportunity to this point, about 15 minutes into the first half. Rodriguez with a one-touch pass over to Montero, who sends it over the top. Texera misses the header, but it's picked up by Junior Gomes, and now 
It's Rodriguez and Montero. Montero back to Rodriguez. And an offside's called against the boxers. Deflected by Montero back towards midfield. Now it's New Bedford with a shot saved by Andrade, and he's able to keep it in bounds. Excellent stop there by Fabio Andrade. Before the game, we were, we were sort of questioning head coach Arminio Furtado's decision to not play Dalton Roach, who's had an excellent run of success, or even David Isaac, who's had a lot of success for the boxers this season. Three senior goaltenders listed on the Brockton roster, and... All of them have been phenomenal to this point for the undefeated boxers. Jalen DeRosa in on the action. Junior Gomes taken down. No call. Now push off call against the Whalers. Free kick for the boxers. Texera can't get the head on it. Now it's DeRosa. Now Montero with a shot oh, off the post. Off the post. Oh, here Montero almost notching number two on the night. Off the post. Off the crossbar. The boxer is about three and a half inches away from being up 2 nothing over the New Bedford Whalers. So we take a look at that replay. A shot out of nowhere, and then it kind of took that path towards net. Off the bottom of the post and out, or the crossbar and out, I should say. Now it's Leonardo Texera up to Rodriguez, who's off sides. Halfway through the first half, one nothing boxers were a mere inches away from doubling their lead. Now Gomes pushed from behind. No call, and now tripped up from behind is number five of the boxers. 
Lewis Spinola. It'll be a free kick for Brockton, about 35 yards out from net. We've seen them score from this far out before. It's going to be taken by Odair Montero, the lone goal scorer. We take a look at the play that caused that a little trip up from behind. Good call by the refs. This free kick blocked, but it's Lewis Spinola on the far side. And it's going to be a throw in for Brockton. Long throw right into the box, headed by Gomes, and cleared out by New Bedford. Taken back by Paolo Romalo. Now DeRosa sending it up. Texera with an opportunity. He leaves it for Gomes, and Gomes' shot is blocked. And it's going to be another corner kick for the boxers. And Montero again called into action for the boxers. Another perfectly placed kick. This one off the back of the head of Gomes and out of play. Montero looking up for Texera, doesn't connect. Swooping in is Gomes. Now Jonathan Rodriguez and Odair Montero. Montero makes a nice move up for Gomes. Back to Montero on the corner and knocked out by number 12, Jonathan Muniz. And it is Jalen DeRosa taking the throw in for Brockton. Deep throw right on net. Oh, who's there? And headed out by the Whalers. Oh. New Bedford again knocking it out towards midfield. Taken right back by the boxers, and now three boxers fighting for it. Sent all the way up, that should be off sides. And New Bedford with an open net and they chip it in. And it's a goal for the New Bedford Whalers number two, Damon Green. You take a look at that, see I think that's off sides. Just a chip into the open net. And we have a tie ball game. So it's going to be Damon Green unassisted. Tying this one up with about 15 minutes left. Now it's Jalen DeRosa in the middle of the field, stopping and starting. Montero chipping it to Rodriguez to Montero. 
Rodeir Montero working his way to the corner. Now it's Gomes in the middle of the field, makes a nice move. Junior Gomes weaving his way through Whaler's defenders. One too many moves for the senior captain of Brockton. Texera can't find this one before it goes out. Whaler throw in. Brockton back across midfield. New Bedford sending it right back. Mascarenas up to Odair Montero. Just a little bit too far. And it's picked up by Evan Dono. A shot, and this one goes wide. Lincoln Roderick's into the game for the boxers. Now Spinola is sending it up and headed back by Jonathan Munoz. Another throw on DeRosa, sending this one long. And knocked out, and it'll be a corner kick for Brockton. Montero yet again. This one's in higher, and Gomes can't get out. And it'll be a corner from the other side for Brockton. It's going to be now Louis Spinola. An old low kick and knocked out of immediate danger by the Whalers. Now it's a foot race, and Green is going to lose it to number 22 of the boxers, Derek DePina. Bedford pressuring.
There's a Whaler down in the goalie's box and not moving. Ran into his own man. Still down. Still has yet to move. Clock is going to stop with 9.06 to go. We'll take a replay. We'll take a look at the replay of exactly what happened. Montero sending it in. And it's number four that. Uh, there's a little push by Junior Gomes. That was number four for the Whalers that's down. That's Noah Medeiros running into Avendano. So an injury timeout on the field. Nine minutes to go in the first half. All tied up. One to one. New Bedford's going to use a timeout here. Back to action here. So Medeiros seems fine. Medeiros back into the game after coming out for one play. Takes Aaron Gomes, and Gomes' shot goes just wide. About eight minutes left in the first half. Bedford back across midfield, a whistle and a stoppage. Some drawing back and forth between Junior Gomes and Marcos Estavo. Leads the referee to come over from about 20 yards upfield. Free kick for the Whalers from just inside midfield. So 
Hudson long in and Andrade able to punch it and now grab onto it. Brockton calling that it should be a penalty against the Whalers. I think they're going to they're going to get that call. Jalen DeRosa going to put this one to play with about five minutes to go in the first half. And not able to get his head on it was Spinola. Just out of reach of the boxers. Rockton able to keep it in. DeRosa tripped up and knocks the ball towards Leonardo Texera, who can't keep it in play. Now it's Texera in the middle of the field, trying the no look behind the back pass. Unsuccessful. Junior Gomes and Riven Rodriguez. Gomes run into. Free kick for the Whalers. As Gomes was bumped off the ball. Brockton, Raven Rodriguez makes a nice move into the middle and he gets tripped up. No whistle. The ref had his arm up as if he were going to call a foul against the Whalers. And the Bedford going to burn a timeout. Bedford getting a little bit chippy on the field. And the referee is saying, Coach, get your team under control. Here's a here's a timeout. Now go out there, talk to your kids. This is a big game. A huge game. Brockton wins, they clinch the big three. Outright. New Bedford wins and they upset the undefeated boxers and give them a chance to win the division. Brockton already clinching a playoff berth by virtue of winning 50% of their games. But it's a completely different story if you enter the playoffs undefeated than if you have a couple losses in the year and, and limp in by virtue of winning half your games.
some dueling fan bases here. New Bedford with a very large crowd consisting of the JV and freshman teams as well as some parents and siblings it looks like. Brockton with the ever-present student section going back and forth. Mascarenas chipping it forward for Texera. Rodriguez can't get to it, but bounces back. So we have about two minutes left. DeRosa and Gomes. Gomes with a shot, and it's going to be a corner kick for the boxers. Odeir Montero taking this one. The lone goal scorer for the boxers and hitting the post on another shot, sending this one far and wide. Still loose! And Avendano making a positional save. And we have foul called against Brockton. Avendano made that save for no other reason than he was in the right place at the right time. Yeah, that's it. And the ball just happened to hit him. And the ball just happened to hit him. That's what they used to say when I hit a home run bat, the pitcher hit my bat just right. <laughs> it's like you get a hole in one, they placed the hole just right. It's this one sent all the way back on Fabio Andrade. Ivan Rodriguez bumped into from behind. He finds Leonardo Texera who's taken down and slow to get up is Texera. one knocked out of bounds by the Whalers. This kicks off an important week for the boxers. New Bedford tonight. Severian at here at Marciano Stadium on Saturday. It's going to be another corner kick for the boxers. Not much time left. Montero going to take this one again. His kick perfectly placed and headed the wrong way and picked up by Avendano. And New Bedford with an opportunity is cleared out. And if Brockton hurries, they could have numbers up turf. The whistles blow. And the first half has come to an end. We're all tied up. One goal apiece for the New Bedford Whalers and the Brockton Boxers. It's going to be a heck of a second half. Stay tuned. 1-1 one, one at the half between New Bedford and Brockton. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Trisha's having a sleepover tonight. Can I go? I wonder about Lucy's friends. What should I say? I know you're only 10, but one of these days a friend will offer you a drink. And alcohol at your age can lead to so many things. None of them good. So can I go to the sleepover? 
Lucy, I want you to promise me something. I finished my homework. <laughs> Bigger promise. If there's any drinking, I want you to say, no thanks, not my thing. Mom. I promise you, your real friends won't care. Deal? Sure. Really? I promise, Mom. They really do hear you. Did you pack your toothbrush? For tips on how to start the talk, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. A public service message from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Oh, hey, bud. Oh. Where, uh, where are you headed? Uh, I'm just gonna hang out. It's a school night. With Gary and Todd? Yeah. Not sure about those two. I've been meaning to ask you. This is tougher than I thought. Is there any drinking going on in this crowd? No. I hope not, because alcohol can lead you to say things and do things that you really wish you hadn't. Isn't this what you're supposed to say? I know. So if any of your buddies ever pressure you to take a drink, just tell them you promised your dad you wouldn't. I'd do anything to keep you safe. Okay, I will. I hope this is working. I promise. Love you too, Dad. They really do hear you. Brian. Yeah? So start the conversation even before they're teenagers. Good idea. For tips on what to say, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. A message from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. You might feel like there's too many problems in the world or that, you know, you as a 15-year-old, 16-year-old can't really make a difference. It's not always about you. It's not just one person. It's, it's a group. It's a team. If we all show up together, that's what it's all about. I was a part of helping to build what it is today. I'm really lucky to get to be a part of that legacy. Just that simple act that takes, you know, five or ten minutes of your time is making a difference and is transforming someone else's life. Once you get there and realize how much you can change someone's life, it's one of the best feelings in the world. I'd do anything to convince you just to be a part of this. You guys keep doing what you're doing. It's something special. Get up and try something. Just try it. Just go, just go to one event, one action team event. It'll just make you feel so good about yourself. Hello and welcome back into Marciano Stadium for second half action between the New Bedford Whalers and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action here at Armand Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium. 1-1 coming into the second half. We saw a direct shot right off the uh, opening kick for New Bedford, a 60-yard attempt that was saved by Fabio Andrade. Brockton with the hit crossbar in the first half that would have put it at 2 nothing at that point. And the lone goal scorer for the boxers, Odeir Montero, off a corner kick that Javier Avendano Got a piece of, but knocked it into his own net. The lone goal scorer for the Whalers is Damon Green. Free kick from 45 yards out for the Whalers. A little chip shot. And the boxer is down and hurt. Looks like number 23, Felipe Pinto. And he's still down holding his hip, it looks like, is Andra trying to roll him over. We take a look at what caused this injury. It's number 22 that's down. Derek DePina. Still in a lot of pain. Right in front of the boxer's net.
So injury timeout as Derek DePina is down. DePina getting up under his own power and walking off, which is always a good sign. It looks like he uh, twisted his back midair. Looks like Brendan Gomes, the senior captain, is going to come in in place of DePina. There are only nine, there's only nine boxers on the field. So they're playing man down right now. I'm not sure why they weren't allowed to make a substitution. That's Derek, Derek DePina coming in as the power play has ended. I think the ref signaled the, uh, Gomes to come in, and he just he didn't get the message. So New Bedford went man up on a minor penalty. Now this one loose, still bouncing around. And it's going to be a foul against the boxers. Free kick for the Whalers from pretty much their own net. Sorday or Montero going back and playing back mid to start the second half. Knocked out by New Bedford. It's been a back and forth affair here at Marciano. The boxers with the majority of the offensive opportunities. are thrown on the far side. A little bit cold for soccer, otherwise a beautiful night. Feels like it's 41 degrees out, officially it's 47. It's a shot is saved by Avendano. Just a little bit of wind blowing directly to the south. 
gusts of about seven miles an hour. Mid humidity point, 70% humidity with a 36 degree dew point. So a little bit cold, but the air isn't too dry. Excellent night here at Marciano Stadium. All tied up at one goal apiece between the big three divisional rivals, Whalers and the Boxers. These two teams will face off in football on Friday night down at New Bedford High School. We will be there for Brockton Community Access Sports. This one knocked out of play in front of the Boxer bench by New Bedford. Rodriguez with a quick restart. Leonardo Texera can't filter the pass through. New Bedford knocking it back out towards midfield. This very, very same boys soccer team will be back here at Marciano on Saturday afternoon. Face off against the Severian Hawks. And they finish off divisional play next Tuesday against the Durfee Hilltoppers. Short restart for New Bedford. Rodriguez give and go to Texera. Texera can't get ahead of the ball. Now looking to turn the corner. Texera starting and stopping and working his way closer to net. His cross is all the way through and no boxer could find it. Odair Montero launching one from about 25 yards out and that can't get through. Good sequence there for the boxers. Now Andrade coming out and diving. The boxes have an empty net. New Bedford not able to get a shot off. We have a whaler writhing in pain. It's number 14, James Matos. It's going to be a free kick outside the box as we take a look at what happened. Matos tripped up from behind. Might have milked a call from the officials. Yeah, he just lost his balance and tripped there. So Brockton needs to come up with a big stop here. Number 11, Clayton DeMello taking this free kick from about 25 yards out. And headed out very nicely by the senior captain, Junior Gomes. Now Leonardo Texera turning on the Jets. He's got one man to beat and trying to find Riven Rodriguez. And the pass doesn't connect. A bad throw ruled against Brockton.
action picking up here between the big three divisional rivals. Bedford calling for a foul, and they're going to get another call from the officials. Big number 24, Daniel Andrade, getting ready to come in for the boxers. Free kick just outside of the goalie's box. About the 12-yard line of the football markings. Low kick directly on net, and it's going to go wide. And they're going to rule off of a Brockton defender, so it's a corner kick for the Whalers. Number 14, James Matos taking this kick. Short kick in New Bedford. Can't get a clean shot off. So Brockton bring it back the other way defensively. And now Texera trying to catch up with it is able to do so. Hesitating on the far side. His cross for Odair Montero. Up to Rodriguez who has to chase it down in the corner. And he does. Jonathan Rodriguez is going to be off sides. So a... Free escape for the Whalers. About 25 minutes left in the game. Rodriguez chipping it to Montero. Back to Rodriguez who can't chase it down. New Bedford knocking it into the stands. Brockton throw in. Derek DePina going to put it in play for the boxers. Long throw, almost directly on net. Montero heading it back and forth with Gomes. And now New Bedford back the other way. And a good slide by Derek DePina. Puts it out of play. Very active fan section here at Marciano. We're all tied up. One goal apiece between the Whalers and the Boxers. North of 25 minutes to go in the second half. And another corner kick for the Whalers. This is Matos again. His kick headed out by the boxers. Now it's Paulo Romalo getting held from behind and he's going to draw the whistle.
Ball has to become set before putting it back in play. So boxers wait a second. Now give and go, and it's Andrade who shanks the shot to the right. Take a look at that excellent give and go. It's Louis Spinola and Andrade with the give and go. Spinola keeping it in bounds. Now up to Texera. Texera's cross. Rodriguez can't get his head on it. Mascarenas makes a move to get around the threatening Whaler. And now it's a 2 on 0 for New Bedford. With a lot of space on the far side. Working his way closer to net. Brockton's defense comes up big. That's Rodriguez. Texera went down, no whistle, and Rodriguez can't catch up to it before New Bedford clears out. Romalo and Depina, and this one's gonna go back all the way to Fabio Andra, the starting goaltender of the boxers. Brockton's had a rotating door at goal this season. Not necessarily a bad thing as the starting keeper of the season, Dalton Rocha, and David Isaac, the backup, have been both stellar. Senior Fabio Andrade getting his chance here tonight and has been spectacular as Rodriguez and now it is Montero on the far side and the shot blocked out of play. Boxer throwing. This one headed up and saved by Avendano. Now it's the Whalers. As Romalo sends it back to the New Bedford side for Andrade. Andrade chipping it up for Luis Spinola and Andrade's taken down. New Bedford doesn't like the call. They're saying to the New Bedford coach, John Macaraco, in not so many words, I'm the ref, not you. You're the coach. Do your own job, not mine. This one sent directly in on Avendano, who makes the easy stop. About 20 minutes left. We are halfway through the second half, all tied up at one goal apiece. Again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing you all the action. I top the turf here at Brockton High School. Very competitive game here between the New Bedford Whalers and the Brockton Boxers. One of the more highly anticipated matchups of the year. This Gomes to Texera, Texera with a chip shot up to Andrade. 
Andra chasing it down, still in play. Now Texera finding a hole. Leonardo Texera's shot sends it out the other side and it'll be a Whaler throwing. Taylor Botello and Daniel Soares. Into the game for the Whalers. Box are throwing. Take your running stop from the back. There you go. From where he is. It's got to take a running stop from where he's supposed to be. Now a shot is going to be shanked wide for the Whalers. Bedford carries it out of bounds. Boxer will throw it in front of their own bench. Throwing for Montero. Montero chipping it to Andrade. Montero on the far side, tripped up. It's going to be a penalty kick for the boxers as Odair Montero was tripped up inside the box. New Bedford's not happy. The crowd going absolutely nuts here at Marciano Stadium, and New Bedford's got to be careful. If they keep John with the ref, they're going to get a few cards. So we have a penalty kick. Jonathan Rodriguez, for the third straight home game, is going to take a penalty kick for the Brockton Boxers. So it's Odair Montero that was tripped in the box on the far side, resulting in a penalty kick. Now the, the officials are going to have a discussion. And it's going to be Jonathan Rodriguez taking the PK for the boxers. And saved by Avendano, and it's going to be a corner kick. New Bedford celebrating as Avendano read that one perfectly. Rodriguez not putting much mustard on that one. And off of the elbow of Avendano and off the post and out. So corner kick for the boxers. Spinola taking this one punched out by Avendano and New Bedford clears house. So Rodriguez successful on the first two PKs this week. Has this one saved by the goalkeeper and 
It's offsides against the boxers. About 15 minutes left here in the second half. It's been another crazy one here at Marciano. This matchup living up to all the hype and then some. Between the 11 1 and 1 Whalers and the 13 0 and 1 Boxers. Bedford's only lost to top ranked Nosset. The defending reigning Division II state champs from last year. On, Derek DePina taking the free kick for the boxers or he's gonna be a throw in. Deep throw and a whistle. And they're gonna rule that Tapina stepped in bounds. So a bad throw. Gomes fighting for it. He's got some space in the middle. He launches a shot, and it's going to be just wide. Did he touch it is the question. Brockton calling for a corner kick. I think they're going to... It's going to be a goal kick for the Whalers. We're now joined by not so newly named athletic director Kevin Caro. It is, it is. Official title, put it on the business cards. Spinola with a couple of nice moves now, and the crowd comes alive. This has been a crazy one at Marciano Stadium tonight. It has been. But, uh, it's been very well played, but we're not, they're not shooting the ball. They try to make the extra pass, and they just need to put the ball on that, and I think that they'll have some good luck. But how about the penalty kick? Jonathan Rodriguez taking a penalty kick in each of the last three games here at Marciano mm -hmm. Stadium. I would have bet the house on that, too, that he would make it. The goalie guessed right. We play on. They say... It's a game of inches, and it seems like ages ago, but in the first half, Odair Montero, launching one from about 40 yards out, hit the bottom of the crossbar, mm -hmm. and it bounced out. Yep. And that last shot that we had down there that the goalie it went right by his arms, missed probably by about a foot and a half. Daniel Suarez taking the corner kick for the Whalers. Little pushing, shawing, and jawing in the box. We don't need any of that, trust me. That's the last thing that we want. This one, one of the most highly anticipated soccer matchups we've seen in at least five years. For you, has it lived up to the hype? Oh, absolutely. This has been a great played game. I mean, momentum has gone both ways that just went off the side of the post it, it, there's been momentum shifts throughout the entire game I mean kids are playing hard it's been clean game so far Sparkton's had a fairly busy schedule the last couple of weeks with just about games every other day Finally have a few consecutive days off here before they take on Severian. 
And we have a Whaler down. It's number 11, Clayton DeMello. And he's limping and favoring his right leg. So headed towards the end of the season, Brockton already clinching a playoff berth. As EAD, what do you want to see since they've already clinched the playoff berth? Should they, what's the difference between just clinching a playoff berth and going in with the division title in hand? Well, I just think that it's where you're seated. I think that makes a, a big difference being the number one or number two seed, depending on where we end up, hopefully. Um, you're obviously, you, you want to play. Oh, it's just a little too high. Through the uprights. Yeah, I mean, you want to play your first home game, obviously. And, um, you know, just going through the tournament. M my hope is that over these next, you know, couple weeks and four games that we have left, that some kids get some playing experience that are, you sit on the bench a little bit. And because you just never know when they'll be needed. And I think Herminio's done a nice job rotating his goalies through so they all have experience. But I'm telling you, this is, uh, these are two really good teams. This one chipped a little bit too far for New Bedford. Goal it, kick for Brockton. And this could be a preview of a, of a South sectional matchup. It really could. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. As you mentioned, Rotating goaltenders all year for head coach Herminio Furtado. Fabio Andrade getting the call tonight. Doing an excellent job against the yeah. Bowden New Bedford offense. Come on. Now it's Leonardo Texera. Oh, that's, a good, that's a good play. And it's that's going just a to real be good a play. And I mean, New Bedford has answered just about everything we've had to throw at them. That's a good team. Not many teams in the state that can say that. No. Put up seven goals against BC High. Yeah, and we put up, I mean, we have. We've dominated the majority of our games. What, on the line? Another bad throw for the boxers. Well, that's something that we'll have to work on right there. They have to, they have to recognize where that line is because that happened quite a bit. Um, not in the Dartmouth game. It was before that, one of the night games here. And I think we had three or four foot violations. Speaking of the Dartmouth game, there hasn't been many days of practice in between this past Saturday and this matchup. If you're head coach Romino Furtado, what do you tell the kids? Because that was that was a wacky one. It was a very physical um, game. Don't, don't get me started. Because um, you know I don't want to. It's water under the bridge. We won, and hopefully we took something out of it that they have to be super careful. Offsides against New Bedford. When talking with head coach Romino Furtado before the game, he said he's proud of the kids because they didn't retaliate. Nope. There were many times they could have, mm -hmm. and he would have perfectly understood why oh. as Rodriguez has it taken off his foot by Marcel Souza. He said he's proud of the kids. They didn't retaliate. They kept their heads on yeah. what they should be, which is soccer and not... Yep. And, this is, and this is a really good group. I mean, I like the dynamic that they have. They genuinely like each other. They hang out with each other. And it shows out on the field. It really does. That should be. Rodriguez tripped up. It'll be another free kick for the boxers. This one just outside of the far edge of the box. Yeah, and I'm looking at this crowd. Maybe I should start uh, charging admission into soccer. Oh my goodness. As you can see got a really right good there, the old here. school hip check. One of the more excitable teams of recent years is Junior Gomes takes this free kick. Oh, he's got, a, he's got to just throw, can he throw this on net if he wants to? He can. Oh, this should be a nice curling kick. Just throw one right man, on him. One man uh, will call it a wall. Oh, see. And this one goes wide to the left. 
Maybe about five minutes left here in the second half. In what? So you liking the new windows up here? That you don't loving the renovations. A lot brighter with the new lights, the new windows. It's a lot warmer in here. Yeah. It's a lot more room on the. Uh, well, it's little just it's just nice counter here. But you don't have to open up, and you don't have to put the old windows in, and you can actually see through the glass. Imagine that. What a novelty. The old ones look like they were cleaned with dirt. <laughs> Muddy towel. Yeah. All right, well, Matt, I've got to go, but it has been a pleasure, and hopefully um, the next 4.53 we can throw something in the net. And we'll see you back here. Saturday against Severian. Saturday against Severian. Tuesday three. against Durfee, and then we wrap up the season uh, Norwell. against Norwell. On a Saturday afternoon, which should be, I think that matchup will be just as good, if not better than this. Norwell no always undefeated. takes it. They're undefeated as well, as far as I know. They were 13-0-1. They're yeah. up there as well? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. Not so newly named athletic director, Kevin Cairo. So New Bedford has called a timeout here in the second half. All tied up. 1-1 with just under five minutes to go. The goals one scored on the corner kick by Odair Montero for the boxers and New Bedford's lone marker coming from the boot of Damon Green. Montero, maybe about three or four minutes after scoring that corner kick, launched one off the crossbar that could prove to be the difference in this game. Jonathan Rodriguez unable to score on the penalty kick. It's Avendano the junior goalkeeper of New Bedford was able to get an elbow on it. Now it's a goal kick for the Whalers. going to be out off of Brockton, New Bedford throwing, taken by Green. Or he's going to drop it and let Cameron Montero put this one in play. Brockton able to clear it high and an offside is called against New Bedford. Be in New Bedford throwing right in front of their own bench. Now, miscommunication between Spinola and Montero. Now, Depina chipping this one up north, pushed from behind is number 28 of the boxers, Mario Mendoza. Gomes sending this one out of play. New Bedford throw in. About two and a half minutes to go. Well, we've seen Brockton strike in stoppage time before. As Gomes ripped away from the ball, he gets it up to Jonathan Rodriguez. Rodriguez off of the head of Noah Medeiros. Brockton still with possession. Mascarenas, it's a long pass for Spinola broken up and now New Bedford long over the top is going to trickle all the way down. 
And out of play, it'll be a throw in for the boxers. Paolo Romalo to take the throw for Brockton. New Bedford's coach again jawing at the officials. Short throw to Pina to Romalo. Romalo shanks this one out of bounds. Not what Brockton's strategy was. Now Montero going to throw it in for the Whalers. And Spinola with some space and time. Now sends it into the New Bedford bench. Under two minutes to go. And time expires. That's the end of the ball game. We end in a draw, one to one, the final score. That's a confusing ending if I've ever seen one. New Bedford takes Brockton to a draw, and Brockton moving to 13-0 and two. And New Bedford moving to 11-1 and two. Brockton moving to 2-0 oh and one in the division. And they will face Durfee next week for all the marbles in the big three. The final score, one to one, the New Bedford Whalers with a draw against the Brockton Boxers. And that will just wrap it up here from Marciano Stadium. For everyone here at BCA Sports, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.